I'm going to show you how to apply the simple harmonic motion kinematics equations to a mass on a spring. So let's say we have a mass on a spring and we'll make it a horizontal situation. No friction. We attach a spring to a rigid wall and then we attach a mass to it and then we say pull back on this mass and release it. Okay, so let me, let me give you some data. So we uh, we know that the spring constant, so it's an interaction between the spring and, and the mass, so it makes sense that our solution has something to do with these numbers. So this, the stiffness of that spring, the spring constant, is 162 newtons per meter. Okay. And then the mass up here, we'll say, is 2 kilograms. And we're going to pull it to the right a distance of 5 centimeters, and it'll bounce back and forth 5 centimeters to the right, 5 centimeters to the left of its equilibrium position. And that's the amplitude. So I'm just going to go ahead and instead of calling it my initial position, I'm going to say, well, that's the amplitude. If I pull it uh, to the right uh, 5 centimeters and release it from rest and it bounces back and forth, that is the amplitude. And go ahead and convert that to meters, 0 0.05 meters. Okay, so based on this, we should be able to calculate a whole bunch of things. We can calculate the, uh, the period, angular frequency, describing uh, how rapidly this thing bounces back and forth. We can calculate maximum velocity, maximum acceleration, and we can even predict exactly where this uh, object is going to be at some future point in time. Okay? And so we can get an exact prediction for position, velocity, and acceleration at a, at a given moment. Okay, so first thing to do is to calculate, I'm going to calculate the angular frequency in the period. So I'm not going to drive this for you, but it can be shown that the angular frequency is equal to the square root of the spring constant divided by the mass. Okay, now it might be conceptually difficult here because, well, where's, where can we put a protractor and measure an angle? We can't. This angular frequency refers to the angular frequency within the sine or cosine function that governs the motion of the object. It's not a literal angle that we can conceivably measure, like, say, in circular motion or something like that. You know, when you talk about the angular frequency, it's, it could uh, be you know, an angular distance divided by a time interval giving you a literal angular, fre angular frequency. This is more of a mathematical abstraction, but it's very useful because it pops up in a lot of the equations. Okay, so let's throw in some numbers here. So 162 newtons per meter divided by mass of 2. And I made the math easy on myself here. So that's uh, square root of 81, which is 9 radians per second. Okay, so we've got that. And of course, we can calculate the period, which is uh, a function of, we can get it, we could drive it as 2 pi square root of m over k, or we can just do 2 pi over angular frequency, so 2 pi over 9, giving me uh, 0.698 seconds. Okay, so this is something we can think about in terms of your stopwatch. We uh, pull this thing to the right, 5 centimeters let go, and it bounces back and forth, and we get this number. Now, interestingly, the 5 centimeters doesn't matter. We could pull it to the right 1 centimeter, bounce back and forth with the, the same uh, the same period. Some of the other things would, would be different though, but the period and angular frequency would be uh, the same regardless of the uh, initial disturbance, as long as it's visible. Okay, if it just sits there, obviously there's no, no point in any of this, but uh, if we move it at all, displace it from equilibrium, then we would uh, get this stuff because it's purely a function of the stiffness of the spring or strength of the spring and the, how much matter is attached to it. Okay, so next thing is to, to think about the, uh, I'm going to do the maximum values. So the maximum speed is equal to the amplitude times the angular frequency. So we just throw in the numbers, amplitude of 0.05 times an angular frequency of 9, and I get 0.45 meters per second. Um, so that's how fast it goes on uh at maximum. So it, when we pull it, we uh, let go as it passes through, and that occurs at the equilibrium location. It's going to be moving to the left at 0.45 meters a second. It's going to go all the way to the other side, 5 centimeters from equilibrium, bounce back, and as it passes through the equilibrium location on its way to the right, it will also have this speed. Okay, we can also calculate the maximum acceleration. That's just the amplitude times the 
angular frequency squared, so 0.05 times 9 radians per second quantity squared, and I get 4.05 meters per second squared. Okay, that maximum acceleration occurs at the extremes. So it's when we get maximum, maximum force is when the spring is, is stretched or compressed the most. And so that also, by Newton's second law, would cause the maximum acceleration. So, and you could, you could actually calculate this using uh, Hooke's law and Newton's second law. If you took uh, the spring constant times this number, that would give you the spring force and divide by the mass, and we should get the, get the same number. Okay, so those are the maximum values. What about if we want to determine exactly where it is, how fast it's going, and its acceleration at a given moment? We can do that as well with the, what I refer to as the simple harmonic motion kinematics equations. It's a new set of kinematics equations, unlike, you know, displacement is initial velocity times time plus one half the acceleration times, uh, times time interval squared. That stuff we throw out because that is a constant acceleration kinematics equation. We don't have constant acceleration, okay? The spring is changing its size it's getting stretched and compressed sometimes we're getting zero force sometimes we're getting a lot of force so um, it's variable acceleration situation but we can get exact equations uh, in this particular case because the force is proportional to the displacement and so we can derive these equations okay i'm not going to drive them for you just trust that uh, some people who know some uh, a lot of math have, have done that that for us okay so we have the position as a function of time so i'll use uh, x and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say calculate all of these at one second. Okay, so just we're picking an arbitrary number. Okay, so at t equals one second, um, where is it? How fast is it going? What's its acceleration? We can calculate that. So using these equations, so position as a function of time will be the amplitude times cosine of the angular frequency times time. Okay, and so... You, um, you see how this angular frequency pops up all over the place. It's in, it's in a lot of these equations. So you do 0.05 times cosine of 9 angular frequency times time of 1. And I get that, okay, if I release this from rest 5 centimeters to the, to the right, wait for it to go. Okay, it's going to take almost 0.7 seconds to bounce back. And about 0.3 seconds later, where is it going to be? Okay, um, it's going to be minus 0 0.046 meters. Okay, that's going to be almost all the way to the left. Okay, so it bounced back and forth once, and then it made its way almost uh, to the other side once again. That's what this number is telling me. And then uh, velocity, similar equation, minus the amplitude times the angular frequency times the sine function. And those of you who know some calculus might recognize that it's derivative of that function with respect to time. So we throw in 0.05 times 9 times sine of 9 times 1. And I get that the velocity at that instant happens to be minus 0.18 meters per second. Okay, so it's moving uh, about a third or well, about, yeah, third or a half of its uh, maximum speeds. It's not moving very fast compared to how fast it does go. Uh, that's because it's almost at the, the turnaround point on the on the left side. And then we can do this uh, similar thing with acceleration. So that is minus the amplitude times the angular frequency squared times the cosine function. Okay. And throw in the numbers. Oops, I forgot my minus sign up there. Uh, 0.05 times 9 squared cosine of angular frequency times time. And I throw that into my calculator and find that the acceleration is 3.69, positive 3.69 meters per second squared. That makes sense. It's to the left of the origin. Its position is, uh, is negative. And so it's going to have, the spring is compressed at that moment. So we're going to have a positive acceleration. Uh, it's getting pushed to the right. Okay, so these equations, actually I should point out, uh, assume that the initial displacement is, is positive to the right and the, the initial velocity is zero. So the sine function uh, starts at zero. So this doesn't cover every single possibility for, um, for simple harmonic motion. If the initial conditions are different than that, then you have to make, make some adjustments to these. But for initial displacement uh, uh, that's, um, that's positive and for 
an initial velocity of zero, these equations give you the exact uh, position, velocity, and acceleration as a function of time. Okay? All right. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.